Now, the four horsewomen of the apocalypse aren't just looking for conformity. They're very serious. I take them seriously. I don't take them as flashes in the pan. A lot of people do. But I think as they are claiming to be victims, a lot of people today are seeing them as the aggressors. And as soon as they get the slightest pushback, they do revert to victim status. And then they spring into attack mode, lab labeling, as we just heard, everyone in the process as racist. Watch. You know, when you say things like the Speaker of the House is being disrespectful to women of color. I did not say that she was disrespectful of women of color. I found some of the comments disrespectful, and that was my personal opinion. Okay. And I did feel that singling out on the basis of one vote was creating an opening. No, so she's creating an opening for the racists. That's what, where that went. So the Speaker of the House is really being disrespectful to these freshman congresswomen, or is she treating them as congresswomen? Like, you have four votes, but guess what? You're not in the majority. We're moving on. That's how congressmen and women are treated when they're not the dominant force within a party, period. But they don't like that. Joining me now to analyze is Candace Owens, former uh, founder, excuse me, of the Blexit movement, and Shireen Kudosi, a Muslim reformer. Candace, you heard the previous conversation. It gets heated, you know, send them back is, you know, rough language. But uh, I saw there was a church in Virginia in Appomattox that said send them back. What, what do you think that is doing to scratch at the, at the, at the Democrats? You know, Why are they so upset by this? They're upset by it because they're more or less seeing the exact same thing that happened in 2016. I feel like I have deja vu watching this. We just listened to Chris Hahn condemn an entire audience as all being racists. Everyone who chanted that is racist. I mean, there's no intellectual depth to that analysis, and that is so problematic. He thinks that every black person is going to wake up and magically vote Democrat because of that chant. That's insulting to black people to think that we're so foolish, as you said, that we would vote against our own self-interest. We are doing a amazing under this economy. It's very clear what this chant meant. It simply meant, if you do not like this country and you don't like America, you are welcome to leave. Obviously, the president is not looking to deport Ilhan Omar, okay? So anybody that's taking it that seriously is completely misreading culture right now. And at the end of the day, they're going to be upset when Trump wins by a larger margin in 2020. I think the, the exclusion and the intolerance is seen, Shireen, so often today on the left, where if you're a Muslim reformer like yourself, you're not an authentic Muslim. Candace is not authentically black. As a woman, I'm not really being true to the female gender because I don't buy into all their tropes. That to me is very intolerant, but they see it as their moral right. And if you don't agree, they will shame you. They will try to drive you out of business and drive you out of public life. Trump sees that, I think. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And I think these polls, we're going to get into it next segment, are pretty devastating on an early basis for this for this Democrat party going down this direction. Yeah, as a Muslim reformer, I see this behavior all the time. This is extremist behavior. Identity politics has become the gateway drug for radicalization. And so this gang, it's not a squad. These are gangs of extremists. They're replicating the radical behavior that we see in other walks of life right now. And so the, the philosophy being that unless you completely agree with everything we say, we're going to be completely intolerant towards you. And it also skirts towards extremist behavior in that they are soft towards Antifa, they're soft towards ISIS. We have a Muslim congresswoman right now who cannot disavow Al-Qaeda. This is almost 20 years after Are you talking about Ilan Omar? Ilan Omar cannot disavow Al-Qaeda. There is a problem with that. So when Trump says, go back, go, we are welcome to go back and come back, my view personally is it's a common sense message. You probably don't belong here. And so, you know, if you have a congresswoman who cannot disavow Al-Qaeda, you don't belong in Congress and you don't belong in America. I've got to get a reaction from both of you about what Congressman Omar says about being an American. Watch. Something that I, I get criticized for all the time. It's not what you think, so don't, like, <laughs> <laughs> don't gasp. Um, it is that like, I, I am anti-American because I, I criticize the, the United States. As an immigrant, I probably love this country more than anyone that is naturally born. Candace. 
I can't think of a single comment, and you can feel free to correct me, that any of them have said positive about America or Americans. They're here asking for radical reform on the basis that this country is fundamentally irredeemable. That is the message. And here what's problematic about the way that they're conveying their messages, they're actually falling into really bad stereotypes of what it means to be a person of color in this country. A really bad stereotype about black Americans is that we're gang bangers and that we're ignorant and that we threaten people and we're violent. We have Ayanna Presley tweeting to Kelly Ann Conway. Hi, Becky. Remember that racist pejorative that the media uh, roundly ignored? Right. Hi, Becky, if I called you Becky. Imagine if you called me Shaniqua. What would the media response be to that? And she said, keep my name out yo mouth. Could you, I mean, think about this. A congresswoman speaking to someone like that. Congress is not bloods versus the Crips, okay? It's Republicans and Democrats coming together to try to come up with something that can make Americans feel like we are working towards a solution in this country. These women are doing the opposite. Uh, they, they believe that America is an evil, racist, corrupt country at its core, and it must be completely remade. That's correct. In a new image. I want to show this, ladies, uh, a new Rasmussen poll shows a surge in the number of Americans who believe Democrats are playing the race card now against Trump for political gain. Shireen, how much longer before the race card loses its, it's meaning? It's already lost complete meaning. So these are women who are pushing Muslims like myself into an ideological concentration camp where we don't want to be. When we look at solutions for radicalization, Ilad Omar is a failed American experiment. We, she should have been integrated Why do you a lot say more. That? Why do you say that? She's not American. She's not. I'm sorry. You well, have, she is American. She's an American citizen. She's an American citizen, but she does not share the American values. And so if we're looking at what does it mean to be American, it means to, to love this country, to have patriotism, to, to support excellence, and to disavow terror ideologies. And if she can't do that, that's a problem. When we look at her Somali community, there's a question of how did that Somali community fail to integrate? And I think we failed her. There's a radicalization, uh, a preventing violent extremism program with Clarion Project, and we go in and we teach communities how to spot signs of radicalization. She doesn't talk about that. She doesn't talk about the persecution of Christian in the Middle East either, which is a huge problem that was addressed in part today at the State Department. Phenomenal panel, as always, both of you.